Now, in this lecture, we will find out the length for flying segment X using three different methods. In the drawing, we have the right triangle, triangle ABC. <coughs> we know that side AB of the right triangle equals to six units. Side DC equals to 10 units. Angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. It is a right angle. Angle DAC equals to 45 degrees. And we want to find out the length of line segment AD that is actually equals to X. So we we'll start with the first method. In the first method, we will do a construction. We will extend line segment AD by straight line and from point C we will draw perpendicular to the extended AD So this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point C and the extended AC is point E. So triangle AEC is a right triangle. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So the sum of the angles in the right triangle, triangle AEC, must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in triangle AEC? We have, we have one angle that is equal to 45 degrees. And we have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees. And we have the missing angle, angle ACE. Angle ACE. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Here we we'll subtract 135 degrees from this equation, and we we'll get that the missing angle, angle ACE is equal to 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, it is 45 degrees. We found out that this angle, angle ACE, equals to 45 degrees. And we also have the rule that in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. So, if we focus on the right triangle, triangle AEC, inside this right triangle we have two equal angles. So, according to the rule that I mentioned, in front of those two equal angles there are equal sides, that is to say AE equals to EC. AE is equal to EC. If we define line segment DE is Y, then the length of side AE will be equal to X plus Y. So AE equals to X plus Y. And from this equation X plus Y equals to AE equals to EC, we will derive that EC is also equals to X plus Y. EC equals to X plus Y. is equals to x plus y. Those two angles they are defined as vertex angles and we have the world that vertex angles are equal to each other. 
so we can write down that angle BDA this angle is equal to this angle that is actually angle EDC according to the rule that vertex angles are equal to each other vertex angles are equal to each other So if we define angle BDA as alpha, then from this equation alpha equals to angle BDA equals to angle EDC, we derive that angle EDC is also equals to alpha. Okay, angle EDC is also equals to alpha. So in the right triangle, triangle ABD, in the right triangle, triangle CDE, we have those two angles that are equal to each other. In the right triangle, triangle BDA, this angle equals to alpha, so this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in this right triangle to 180 degrees. Here, 90 degrees minus alpha plus alpha is 90 degrees, and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. Okay, likewise, in the right triangle, triangle EDC, this right angle, this angle equals to alpha, so this angle must be also equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the, this right triangle, triangle EDC, 280 degrees. So actually, those two angles, they are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. So angle BAD, is equal to this angle that is actually angle BCE and both angles are equal to 90 degrees minus alpha I repeat again Angle BAD equals to angle DCE, and both angles they are equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. And finally, those two angles they are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees. So, angle ABD in this triangle ABD. is equal to this angle that is actually angle DEC. And both angles they are equal to 90 degrees. I'll repeat again. Angle ABD equals to angle DEC, and both angles they are equal to 90 degrees. So we actually prove that, that all the three angles of the right triangle, triangle BAD, the, wrong, the right angle, triangle, triangle BAD. Can warrant all three angles of the right triangle, triangle EDC, and 
both those areas are equal to 90 degrees one alpha, both those two angles are equal to alpha, and both those two angles are equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, we proved that the right angle ABD is similar to the right angle EDC according to angle 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 similarity rule. <coughs> We prove that the right tri green triangle triangle ABD is similar. This is the sign of <coughs> similar to the right green triangle triangle EDC. And they are similar to each other according to angle 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will conclude that AB over EC is equal to BD over DE. is equal to AD over DE. I repeat again, because of the fact that the two mental angles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over EC equals to BD over DE equals to AD over DE. Actually, it is actually BD over DE, and it's here we have AD over DC. Okay, it is actually AD over DC. AD over DC, so... Again, AB over DC equals to BD over DE equals to AD over DC. So here... AB is equal to 6 units, so we substitute AB by 6. EC equals to X plus Y, so we substitute EC by X plus Y. BD is BD, we will leave it as it is and we will find out the value of BD later. It is BD over DE. DE equals to Y. We substitute DE by Y. <coughs> AD is X according to what is given us in the question. And DC equals to 10 units according to what is given us in the question. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 6 over, x plus, 6 over x plus y equals to bd over y, that is equal to x over 10. We will find out the value of, of sine bd by implementing the Pythagoras theorem on this right green triangle, triangle abd. In the right, right <coughs> green triangle, triangle abd, By PT, PT is the relation for Pythagoras theorem. We get that the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the first of the perpendiculars. That is to say, AD square is equal to AB square plus BD square. I repeat again. 
in the night time and time and we did only do the pattern of stone, the square of the apostles equals to the sum of the source of the perpendiculars. That is to say, AD square equals to AB square plus BD square. Okay? AD is X, so AD square is X square. And it is equal to AB square, AB is 6, so AB square is 6 squared, it is 36 plus BD square, BD square, BD is the missing line segment. So in conclusion, we found out that X square equals to 36 plus BD square, we subtract 36 from this equation and we get that BD square equals to x squared minus 36, we will take out out of this equation and we will get that the value of bd is equal to the square root of x squared minus 36. So, therefore, we can substitute bd in this equation, equation number 1, by square root of x squared minus 36, we will do it now. And we get that according to equation number one, six over x plus y equals to BD, BD is equal to the square root of x squared minus 36 over DE over Y and it is equal to x over 10. Here we create the first equation from this long equation. Those two expressions are equal to each other, so we write the first equation that say 6 over x plus y is equal to x over 10. We of course multiply this equation, equation number 1, and we get that 6 times 10 is 60, and it is equal to x times x plus y. We will open the markers on this side of equation number 1, and we get that, going to equation number 1, 60 equals to x times x is x squared, plus xy. We subtract x squared from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that the going to equation number 1, xy equals to 60 minus x squared, In the next step, we create equation number 2 from this equation. Those two expressions are equal to each other, so this will be equation number 2. That only the equation number 2, the square root of x squared plus 36 over y is equal to x over 10. Here we will cross multiply equation number 2 and we get that according to equation number 2 xy is equal to 10 times square root of x squared plus 36 So we have here two different expressions for xy 
those two different expressions. Then, in the next step, we create equation number three that states that xy according to equation number one must be equal to xy according to equation number two. So, xy according to equation number one is 60 minus x squared, and it must be equal to xy according to equation number two, that is actually 10 times square root of x squared plus 36. Here we will square both sides of equation number 3 and we get that according to equation number 3 60 minus x squared squared equals to 10 squared that is 100 and here the square cancels the root and we left only with x squared plus 36. We will open the brackets on both sides of this equation, equation number 3, and we get that going into equation number 3. 6 minus x squared squared is 60 squared. That is 3600. Plus x squared squared is x to the power of 4. Minus 2 times 60 times x squared is equal to 100 times x squared and here it is actually x square minus 26 here yeah, it was also x square minus 36 and here is x square minus 36 so 100 times minus 36 is minus 3600 and it is equal to 0 uh, no it is equal to this side of the equation So here we will add 3600 to this equation, equation number 3, and we get that according to equation number 3, 3600 plus 3600 is 7200. And uh, here we have also plus x to the power of 4. Minus 2 times uh, 60 is minus 120. Here x squared. And it is equal to 100 x squared. So here we we'll subtract 100 x squared from this equation, equation number 3. And we we'll get that the goal is to equation number 3. x to the power of 4 minus 120 minus 100 is minus 220 it is actually minus 220x squared plus 7200 <coughs> that is equal to 0 here we we'll substitute minus 220x squared by minus 100x squared minus 40x squared and we get that according to equation number 3 x to the power of 4 minus 180x squared minus 40x squared plus 7200 equals to 0 here we will divide this expression to two parts this will be the first part and this will be the second part and we take a common factor from each part from this expression x to the power of 4 minus 80x squared we take x squared as a common factor 
what is left from x to the power of 4 after we took from it x squared as a common factor, what is left it is actually x squared and what is left uh, from minus 180 x squared after we took x squared as a common factor, what is left it is actually minus 180 from this expression we take minus 40 as a common factor so what is left from minus 40 x squared after we took minus 40 as a common factor, what is left it is actually x squared and here for uh, what is left from 70 to 100 after we took uh, minus 40 after we took from it minus 40 as a common factor what is left it is actually minus 180 and it is equal to 0 so here we take uh, x squared minus 180 as a common factor from equation number 3 so x squared minus 180 is a common factor so what is left from this expression of we took from it x squared minus 180 is a common factor, what is left is actually x squared and what is left from this expression after we took from it x squared minus 180 is a common factor, what is left it is actually minus 40 and it is equal to 0. So here we have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution is that x squared minus 180 equals to 0 and the second solution for x is that x squared minus 40 equals to 0 so according to the first solution we get that x squared is equal to 180 180 is 36 times 5 now we take out all of this equation equation number 1 and we get that x equals to the square root of 36 that is 6 times square root of 5 that is actually equals to 13.41 that is greater than 10 units this is the first solution for x and the second solution for x is that x uh, squared minus 40 equals to 0, that is to say x squared equals to 40 40 is 4 times 10 we take out all of this equation and we get that x is equal to square root of 4 is 2 so it is 2 times square root of 10 uh, in terms of numbers it is 6.32 units that is less than 10 units so in, in conclusion we found two solutions for x the first solution for x is that x equals to 6 times square root of 5 that is 13.41 that is greater than 10 units and the second solution for x is that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 that is actually equals to 6 times square to 6.32 that is less than 10 units so in the next step I will copy the right triangle triangle ABD and the right triangle triangle ADE in order to find out which one of the two solutions is correct for our drawing so we have the right triangle triangle ABD the right green triangle So this is 
the last green triangle, triangle ABD, is the copied from the original drawing. AD equals to X, angle D AC equals to 45 degrees, and DC here uh, equals to 10 units. And this is actually triangle ADC. And here, the right triangle, the right green triangle, triangle ABD, actually this angle we define this angle as theta, and this angle equals to alpha, actually inside the right triangle, triangle ABD, we have three interior angles, theta, 90 degrees, and alpha, those are the three interior angles of the right triangle, triangle ABD, and this angle, that is actually angle ADC, is an exterior angle of the right triangle, triangle ABD. I will write it down. Trying, uh, angle ADC, this angle. Is an exterior angle. Of the right green triangle, triangle ABD. Okay, and as I already said, triangle ABD is also three interior angles that are, that are theta, 90 degrees, and alpha. And we have rule number one, it is related to the size of an exterior angle. According to rule number one, The size of an external angle is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not that are not adjacent to it. According to rule number one, the size of an external angle in a triangle, of course, is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. So, according to rule number one, the size of this external angle, angle ADC, equals to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. Angle alpha is adjacent to angle ADC. Therefore, the two other angles, the two other internal angles that are not adjacent to it, is theta and 90 degrees. So, according to rule number one, the size of angle ADC, the external angle ADC, is equal to theta plus 90 degrees. Okay, the two, the sum of the two other internal angles that are not adjacent to it is 90 degrees plus theta. So, the size of the external angle, angle ADC equals to 90 degrees plus theta. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, and especially in triangle ADC, the sum of its angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in triangle ADC? We have this angle that is equal to 45 degrees, and we have also this angle that is equal to 90 degrees plus theta, and we have the missing angle, this angle that is equal to Angle, it is actually angle ACD. 
In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. According to the rule that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, we subtract 135 degrees from this equation, and we get that Uh, 45 degrees plus 10 degrees is 135 degrees, so 135 degrees will get cancelled, and we left only with angle theta that is equal to angle theta plus angle ACD, that they must be equal to 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, it is 45 degrees. Here we subtract angle theta from this equation, and we get that the missing angle, angle ACD, Angle ACD equals to 45 degrees minus theta. Okay, so we found out that the missing angle, angle ACD equals to 45 degrees minus theta. So this angle, angle ACD equals to 45 degrees minus theta. And from the drawing, it is very easy to see that this angle, angle ACD is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. So I write it down, angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. I write it down, angle angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ACD. And we actually have also rule number two that is related to the smallest angle in, in a triangle. According to rule number two, the smallest angle in a triangle is always opposite the shortest angle, the, the shortest side, the shortest side. So according to rule number two, the smallest angle in a triangle is always opposite the shortest side. So here, according to rule number two, angle ACD, this angle that is the smallest angle, it must be opposite the shortest side. That is to say, according to rule number two, AD that is equal to X is the shortest side in triangle ADC. Only to rule number two, AD that is equal to X is the shortest side of triangle ADC. And especially it must be shorter than side DC so AD that is equal to X must be shorter less than DC but we know that DC equals to 10 units it is given us the question so from this inequality AD equals to X and this smaller than DC that is equal to 10, we will derive that X is 
less than 10 units x is less than 10 units so we actually add two solutions from x the first solution was x equals to 6 times root of 5 that is 13.41 that is less than 10, that is greater than 10 units so we know that x must be less, less than 10 units according to rule number 2 but here we found out that x is greater than 10 units so this solution is in correct solution, we will cancel this solution and we left only with the solution that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 that is actually 6.2 that is less than 10 units so this is the solution to the question that the value of line segment x is equal to either 2 times square root of 10 units or in terms of numbers it is equal to 6.32 units this is the solution to the question in the next step I will present to you how to find out the length of line segment AD that is equal to X according to the second method In the second method, we'll do another construction. From point D, we'll draw a straight line on AC in such a way that the angle that will be created will be equal to 45 degrees. So we draw the straight line from D on AC in such a way then this angle, angle AED, will be equal to 45 degrees. Okay, we can do it by construction. So here, in triangle ADE, we have two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to 45 degrees, and we know that in front of equal angles in the triangle there are equal sides, that is to say AED must be equal to DE. But AD equals to X according to what is given us in the question. So from this equation X equals to AD equals to DE, we will derive that DE is also equals to X. DE is also equals to X, so we can write here that DE equals to X. And we also know that in triangle ADE, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in triangle ADE, we have this angle that is equal to 45 degrees, plus this angle that is also equal to 45 degrees, plus the missing angle that is actually angle ADE. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Here, 45 degrees plus 45 degrees is 90 degrees, so we subtract 90 degrees from this equation and we, and we get that the missing angle, angle ADE, is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Okay, so we found out that this angle, the missing angle, is equal to 90 degrees, so here, angle ADE is equal to 90 degrees. We define angle BAD in the right triangle, triangle ABD as theta. So if angle BAD equals to theta in the right triangle ABD, then angle ADB must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in the, in the right triangle ABD to 180 degrees. Okay, here from point E we will go perpendicular on BC so this angle 
equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to our construction. We will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC as point F. And we know that triangle ABC is a right angle, therefore BC, line segment BC is one side of a right triangle, so BC is the side of a triangle, it must be a straight line. So I write it down, line segment Line segment BC as the side of a triangle is a straight line. Okay, BC is a straight line, and we have the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus on the upper side of the straight line BC, At point D, then the sum of the angles on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have? On the upper side of the theta we see at point D, we have here 90 degrees one of theta. And we have here, this angle is equal to 90 degrees. And we have the missing angle, here this angle is equal to angle, it is actually angle ED, EDF. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. According to the rule that I mentioned, that the sum of the angles, the angles on, on one side of the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. Again, angle, the first angle that is 90 degrees minus theta plus the right angle that is 90 degrees plus the missing angle that is angle EDF. In total, the sum of those two angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. So here we have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees, so we have 180 degrees on both sides of the equation, so 180 degrees will get cancelled. And we left only with minus theta plus angle EDF that is equal to zero. We will add theta to this equation and we get that the missing angle, angle EDF, is equal to theta. So, let me see the angle and get the F equals to theta, so this angle equals to theta. So in the right triangle, triangle EFD, if this angle equals to theta, then this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in triangle EDF to 180 degrees. Okay? So in the next step we will prove that those two right angles can go into each other. We actually will prove that the right triangle triangle ABD, the right green triangle triangle ABD is can go into the right triangle triangle DEF. <coughs> And those two right green triangles can go into each other according to angle side angle rule. So I will write it down. We will prove that the right green triangle triangle ABD can go into the right green triangle triangle DEF. So, why those two right angles can work to each other? First of all, those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. So, angle BAD is 
Descendant is equal to this angle, it is actually angle EDF, and they are both equal to theta. I repeat again. Angle BAD equals to angle DF, and they are both equal to theta. In addition, AD equals to DE equals to X. Side AD is equal to side DE and they are both equal to X. AD equals to DE equals to X. And those two angles are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So angle A T B is equal to angle D E F and they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta. I'll repeat again, angle ADV equals to angle ADF and they are both equal to 90 degrees from the stator. So we actually proved that those two green line triangles can go into each other according to angle side, angle rule. Why? What is angle side, angle rule? We proved that those two angles and the side that is between them, that is uh, actually side AD, in triangle ABD, correspondingly congruent to those two angles and the side that is between them, that is actually ED in triangle EDF. Therefore, we prove that those two right triangles can go into each other according to angle side angle rule. So I write it down. We actually proved. The right green triangle triangle ABD can go and this is the sign of can go and to the right green triangle triangle EDF according to angle side angle rule. And from the fact that the two white angles can go into each other, we will conclude that AB equals to DF. AB equals to DF. Here AB equals to DF, according to the rule, this corresponding sides of the white angles are, are equal to each other. Those two triangles can go into each other, therefore the corresponding sides, that is to say AB and DF, will be equal to each other. But A, B equals to 6, it is given as the equation. So from this equation, 6 equals to A, B equals to D, F, we will derive that D, F is also equals to 6. D, F is also equals to 6. And can I know that D, F equals to 6 units? So here, what is the length of line segment F, C? Following on with it, it is very easy to see that the length of line segment FC it is equal to DC minus DF. DC minus DF is equal to FC. So FC equals to DC that is 10 units minus DF that is 6 units. That is to say, FC equals to 10 minus 6, that is 4 units. So we found out that FC equals to 4 units. Likewise, uh, because of the fact that those two right green triangles can run to each other, we will conclude that BD equals to EF. BD equals to EF according to the rule that corresponding angles in the right triangles are equal to each other. And if we define BD as Y, here, 
BD equals to Y, then from this equation Y equals to BD equals to EF, we will derive that EF is also equals to Y. EF is also equals to Y, so we can write here that EF equals to Y. In the next step, we will prove that the right green triangle, the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle EFC. Okay, so we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. And the right small triangle, triangle EFC. So why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, we have those two angles that are equal to each other, they're both equal to 90 degrees. So angle ABC, in triangle ABC is equal to angle EFC, in triangle FEC. And both angles are equal to 90 degrees. Okay, here. Angle ABC equals to angle EFC, and both angles are equal to 90 degrees. And here we have also a common angle. This angle is a common angle. It belongs to both angles. So we can write down that this angle equals to itself. Or Angle BCA is equal to angle FCE as a common angle. I repeat again. Angle BCA equals to angle FCE as a common angle. And finally, those two angles are also equal to each other according to further angle theorem. So actually, angle BAC, this angle in triangle ABC, is equal to angle FEC, this angle. Okay, and then BAC equals to angle FAC according to Frontenac and Theorem. So, what is Frontenac and Theorem? Further angle theorem is that if you prove the two angles in one triangle can go end to two angles in another triangle, then the first group of angles must also can go end. And we proved that those two angles in the right triangle ABC can go end to those two angles in the right triangle EFC. Therefore, the first group of angles, that is to say, those two angles must also can go end because they are, are complementary to 180 degrees. So we proved. The triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC according to angle, 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 similar to one. I write it down. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC according to angle, 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 similar to one. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over BC in triangle ABC is equal to EF over FC in triangle FC. I'll 
Он притягнен, он не фан, где трагали бисы, именно тут трагали бисы, и конкурс, где ты был бисы, который был ефу в бисы. И A, B is equal to 6, so we'll substitute A, B by 6. B, C is equal to Y plus 10. We'll substitute B, C by Y plus 10. And it is equal to E, F. E, F equals to Y. And F, C equals to 4. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, Y, and 6 over y plus 10 equals to y over 4. Here we will cross multiply this equation equation number 1. And we will get that according to equation number 1, 6 times 4 is 24, and it is equal to y times y plus 10. We will open the brackets on this, on this side of equation number 1. And we will get that according to equation number 1, 24 equals to y times y is y squared plus 10y. We subtract 24 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that the going to equation number 1. Here it is 10y, of course. According to equation number 1, y squared plus 10y plus 24 is equal to 0. So we have here a quadratic equation and uh, the general form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for. Uh, we will find out the value of x according to the following formula. x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac over 2a. Okay. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a is equal to 1, the coefficient b equals to 10, and the coefficient c equals to minus 24. And the variable that we are looking for is y, so x equals to y. So we put the data inside the formula for x and we find out the value of the values of y. So here y equals to minus b, b is 10, so minus b is minus 10, plus minus square root of b square, b square, b is 10, so b square is 10 squared, that is 100, minus 4 times a is 1, times c is minus 24, over 2a, A is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So we get here that y equals to minus 10 plus minus minus 4 times minus 24 is 90 plus 96, and 96 plus 100 is 196 over 2, and the square root of 196 is 14. So in conclusion, we have here two solutions that are possible for y. y equals to minus 10 plus minus 14 over 2. So the first solution for y will be y1 that is equal to minus 10 minus 14 over 2. Minus 10 minus 14 is minus 24. And minus 24 over 2 is minus 12. So we found out that the first solution, y1 equals to minus 12. But because of the fact that y 
is the length. It is the length of side BD of triangle ABD. So why it is the length? Therefore, it must be a positive number. That is to say, why it can never be a negative number? So this solution is in following solution. We can set the solution. We will have to leave the solution that y2 is equal to minus 10 plus 14 over 2. Minus 10 for plus 14 is 4 and 4 over 2 is 2. So the second solution is that y equals to 2. So in the next step, we will copy the right triangle triangle ABD in a new page and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on this right triangle triangle ABD. According to the Pythagoras theorem, we will get that yep, triangle ABD. This is our triangle, triangle ABD. In the right triangle, triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, PT is the position for Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say, AD square equals to a B square plus B D square. So A D equals to X, so A D square is X square. And it is equal to A B square. A B is 6. So A B square is 6 squared, this is 36. Plus BD square. BD is 2, so BD square is 2 squared, it is 4. So we found out that x squared equals to 36 plus 4, this is 40. We take all of these equations and we, we, we get that x equals to the square root of 40. 40 is 4 times 10. And the square root of 4 is 2, so here we get that x equals to either 2 times square root of 10 units. So in terms of numbers, it is 6. Point 32 units. Okay, so we finished uh, to answer the question according to the second method. And the next step I will present to you how to find out the value of line segment X according to the third method. In the third method, we will define angle BAD as theta. We will define side BD as Y. So in the right triangle, triangle ABD. We know that triangle theta is equal to BD over AB. BD equals to Y and AB equals to 6. So in conclusion, we found out that in the right triangle ABD, target theta is equal to Y over 6. In the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. In the right triangle, triangle ABC, Tangles theta plus 45 degrees.
is equal to BC over AB. Here BC equals to Y plus 10 and AB equals to 6. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, tangents theta plus 45 degrees equals to y plus 10 over 6 actually we have trigonometric identity for tangent theta plus 45 degrees according to the following trigonometric identity tangent theta plus 45 degrees is equal to 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta so now we can substitute tangent theta plus by this expression in equation number one, we'll do it now. And we'll get that going into equation number one. Time is theta plus 45 degrees, according to this trigonometric identity, it is equal to 1 plus time is theta over 1 minus time is theta. And this is equal to going into equation number one to y plus 10 over 6 we have already found out that tangent theta equals to y over 6 so we substitute tangent theta in this equation equation number 1 by y over 6 we will do it now and we will get that 1 plus tangent theta is y over 6 over 1 minus Tangent theta is also y over 6. It is equal to y plus 10 over 6. Here we will multiply 1 by 6 and then we divide it by 6 in order to have a common factor of y over 6. And we will get that according to equation number 1, 6 plus y over 6, over 6 minus y over 6, equals to y plus 10 over 6. Uh, is equal to y plus 10 over 6 so here we have 6 in the numerator and 6 in the denominator so 6 will get cancelled and we left only with according to equation number 1 6 plus y over 6 minus y that is equal to y plus 10 over 6. Here we cross multiply this equation equation number 1 and we get that the to equation number 1 6 times 6 plus y is equal to 6 plus y times y plus 10 we will open the markets on both sides of equation number 1 and we get that the corner to equation number 1 6 times 6 is 36 6 times y is 6y here we have 6 times 6 times y is 6y 6 times 10 is 60 minus y times y is minus y squared 
minus y times 10 is minus 10y. Here we have 6y on both sides of the equation, so 6y will get cancelled. And we left only with uh, this side of the equation, first is 6 is equal to 60 minus y squared minus 10y. We will add y squared and 10y to this equation, equation number 1. And we get that y squared plus 10y plus 36 equals to 60. We subtract 60 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, y squared plus 10y. 36 minus 60 is minus 24 is equal to 0. So here we have the same quadratic equation that we have in the second method. We have already solved this quadratic equation and we found two answers for y. The first answer, the first solution is y1 equals to minus 12 and the second solution is y2 equals to 2. Y one can never be a negative number because y is a length. So we cancel the first solution and we left only with the solution that y2 equals to 2. So here I copy the right triangle, triangle ABD, on this new page and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem of the right triangle, triangle ABD. So in the right triangle, triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, we will get that AB squared plus BD squared equals to AD squared. AB is 6, so AB squared is 6 squared is 36 plus bd squared, bd is 2, so bd squared is 2 squared, that is 4, and it is, it is equal to ad squared, ad is x, so ad squared is x squared. In conclusion, we found out that, that x squared equals to 36 plus 4 is 40. We take out of this, this equation, and we get that x equal to the square root of 40, and uh, 40 is 4 times 10, the square root of 4 is 2, so in conclusion we found out that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. We finished with the third method. In the next step, I will summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out the length of my segment a d that is equal to x and uh, in the first method we made a construction we extended line segment a d by a straight line and then from point c we drew perpendicular to the extended a d the touching point of the perpendicular from point c and the extended AD is defined as E. So here we have the right triangle, triangle ADE. And we know that the sum of the angles in this right triangle must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in the right triangle ADE? We have 45 degrees, 90 degrees, plus the missing angle that is angle ACE. In total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. We, we subtracted 135 degrees from this equation. And we found out that the missing angle, angle ACE, this angle equals to 45 degrees. So in the right triangle, triangle ACE, we have two equal angles. And we know that in photo of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. That is to say, AE must be equal to EC.
we define d e as y, so a e is equal to x plus y, so a e equals to x plus y, so we have the equation that x plus y equals to a e equals to e c, we derive from this equation that e c also equals to x plus y. Then we have those two angles are defined as vertex angles, and we have the rule that vertex angles are equal to each other. Okay, angle B D A is equal to angle E D C. The so if we define an angle as alpha, then the other angle will be also equal to alpha. And uh, we also know that those two angles, the right angles. So if this angle is alpha. In the right triangle ABD, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees from alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle ABD to 180 degrees. Likewise, in the right triangle DEC, if this angle is alpha, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. Okay? Then we prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other. Those two angles are both equal to alpha. Those two angles are equal to 90 degrees, and those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees on alpha. So all the angles of triangle ABD can go into all the angles of triangle DEC. Therefore, those two triangles can uh, similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those two green triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over EC equals to BD over DE equals to AD over DC. Okay. We know that AB equals to 6, EC equals to X plus Y, BD is BD, DE equals to Y, AD equals to A, X, and DC equals to 10. Then we found out the size of the uh, length of length segment BD by implementing the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle ABD. Here, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the square of the perpendiculars, that is to say AD square equals to AB square plus BD square. In the right triangle, triangle ABD, AD square equals to AB square plus BD square, AD is X, so AD square is X square, and it is equal to AB squared. AB is 6, so AD squared is 6 squared, that is 36, plus BD squared is the missing line segments. We subtracted 36 from this equation, and we found out that BD squared equals to X squared minus 36. We took out of this equation, and found out that BD equals to the square root of X squared minus 36. So that is to say we can substitute BD in this equation, equation number 1, by square root of x square minus 36, we did it, and we got that according to equation number 1, 6 over xy equals to bd is square root of x square minus 36 over y, that is equal to x over 10. Then, from this long equation, we derived the first equation, that those two expressions, the expressions are equal to each other, that is to say, 6 over x plus y equals to x over 10. We cross multiply this equa uh, equation, equation number 1, and we, got, we found out that 6 times 10 is 60, and it is equal to x times x plus y. Here we open the brackets on this side of equation number 1, and we found out that x times x is x squared plus xy. We, uh, we subtracted x squared from this equation, equation number 1, and we got that xy equals to 60 minus x squared. Then we created from this long equation, the first equation. Actually, those two expressions, they are equal to each other. This, this is the second equation. So, x square root of x square minus 46 over y equals to x over, over 10. We first multiplied this equation, equation number 2, and we found out that xy equals to 10 times x square minus 36. So, then we created the equation number 3 that states that x squared according to equation number 1 must be equal to x squared x y according to equation number 1 must be equal to x y according to equation number 2. x y according to equation number 1 is 60 minus x squared. It, it must be equal to x squared according to equation number 2. That is actually 10 times root of x squared minus 36. 
and then we squared both sides of equation number 3 so here we will have 60 minus x squared squared that is equal to 10 squared that is 100 here the squared misses the root and we left only with x squared minus 36 we open the brackets on both sides of equation number 3 and we got that 60 minus x squared squared is 60 squared that is 3600 plus x squared squared that is x to the power of 4 minus 2 times 60 times x squared that is equal to 100 times x squared minus 2600 then we added 3600 to this equation equation number 3 and we found out that 3600 plus 3600 is 7200 plus x squared minus 180 x squared equals to uh, 100 uh, x squared here we subtracted 100 x squared from this equation equation number 3 and we got that x to the power of 4 minus 120 x squared minus 100 x squared is minus 220 x uh, squared plus 7200 that is equal to 0 then we substituted x squared by we substituted minus 200 x squared by minus 180 x squared minus 40 x squared and we got this expression that x to the power of 4 minus 180 x squared minus 40 x squared plus 7200 equals to 0 so we divided this expression to two parts and we took uh, a common factor from each part from this part we took a common factor of x squared and inside the brackets we have x squared minus 180 from this part of the expression we took minus 40 as a common factor and inside the brackets we have x squared minus 180 then we took uh, a common factor of x squared minus 180 from this expression and inside the brackets we have x squared minus 40 that is equal to 0 so here we have two solutions that are possible for this uh, equation, the first solution is x squared minus 180 equals to 0 and uh, the second solution is x squared minus 40 equals to 0 so according to the first solution x squared equals to 180 180 is 30 times 180 is 36 times 5 we took out of this equation and found out that x equals to 6 times square root of 5 or in terms of numbers is 13.41 that is greater than 10 units then according to the second uh, solution for x, x square equals to 40 40 is 4 times 10 we took out of this equation and found out that, that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 units so in terms of numbers it is 6.42 units that is less than 10 units then I copied the right triangle, triangle ABD, and the right triangle and triangle ADC in this new page in order to find out which one of the solutions is correct for X. Here, inside the green line triangles, we have three interior angles theta, 90 degrees, and alpha are three interior angles of the right green triangle, triangle ABD, while this angle, angle ADC, it is an external angle of triangle ABD. Angle ADC is an external angle of triangle ABD. And we have rule number one that the size of an external angle is equal, the size of an external angle in a triangle, of course, is equal uh, to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. So here, According to rule number one, the size of this external angle, angle ADC, will be equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. Angle alpha is adjacent to angle ADC, so the other two internal angles that are not adjacent to it are theta and 90 degrees, and the sum of those two angles is 90 degrees plus theta. So we found out that according to rule number one, the size of the internal angle, angle ADC, is theta, 90 degrees plus theta. 
Okay, and uh, in the Etroyeri DC, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees, that is to say 45 degrees plus 90 degrees plus theta plus the missing angle that is angle ACD. In total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. Here, we subtracted 145 degrees from this equation, and we got that theta plus angle ACD equals to 45 degrees, because 180 degrees plus 135 degrees is 45 degrees. Then we subtract the theta from this equation and we found out that the missing angle, angle ACD equals to 45 degrees minus theta. This angle equals to 45 degrees minus theta and it is very easy to see from the drawing that this angle, angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. So we can write down that here angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. Then we have rule number two. According to rule number two, the smallest angle in a triangle is always opposite the shortest side. So according to rule number two, this smallest angle, it is located opposite the shortest side. That is to say, AD that is equal to X is the shortest side in triangle ADC according to rule number two. Okay, here AD that is equal to X, it is, it is the shortest side of triangle ADC. It is the shortest side of triangle ADC, according to rule number two. Okay? So, because of the fact that AD is the shortest side of triangle ADC, it means that AD must be less than DC. AD must, that is equal to X must be less than DC because it is, it is the shortest side of triangle ADC. But DC equals to 10, so from this inequality we, we derive that X is less than 10 units. X is less than 10 units. So here we have two solutions that we have already found. The first solution is x equals to 6, six times root of 5, that is 13.41 units, that is greater than 10. But according to what we just right now found, we found out that x, be less than, x must be less than 10 units, and here x is greater than 10, therefore this solution is a correct solution, we cancel this solution, and we left only with the solution that the length of line segment x is uh, either 2 times root of 10 units, or in terms of numbers, it is 6.32 units, that is less than 10 units. That is the answer to the question. Then I present it to you how to find out the value of line segment x according to the second method. In the second method, We did another construction from point D. We draw third line on AC in such a way that angle AED, this angle will be equal to 45 degrees. So in triangle ADE, we have two angles that are equal to each other, and we have the rule that in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. That is to say, AD must be equal to DE according to the rule that I mentioned, but AD equals to X according to what is given as the equation. So, from this equation, X equals to AD equals to DE, we will derive that DE is also equal to X. And we also know that the sum of the angles in the in triangle AD must be equal to 180 degrees. So, 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus the missing angle that is actually angle AD, in total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. 45 degrees plus 45 degrees is 90 degrees, so we we'll subtract 90 degrees from this equation, and we got that the angle ADE, the missing angle, is the right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, and here we know that uh, first of all, we defined angle BAD as theta. In the right angle ABD, if angle BD equals to theta, then angle BDA 
the second must be equal to 90 degrees when it's theta in order to complete the sum of the angles to 180 degrees. So we know that this angle equals to 90 degrees when it's theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and we have the missing angle, angle EDF. Triangle ABC is a right triangle, therefore line segment BC is one side of a triangle, if it's, and as the side of a triangle, it must be a straight line. So BC, it is a side of a triangle, therefore it must be a straight line. So, and we have the rule that the sum of the angles on the upper side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so if you focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D, then the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. So which angles we have here? We have 90 degrees one of theta, we have 90 degrees, plus the missing angle that is actually angle E, D, F. In total, the sum of those two angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees from theta plus 90 degrees plus the missing angle that is angle EDF. In total, they must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. So we have 180 degrees on both sides of the equation, so 180 degrees will get cancelled and we left only with one theta plus angle EDF that is equal to zero. We had the theta to this equation and we found out that the missing angle, angle EDF, equals to theta. So this angle equals to theta. Then from point A we draw a perpendicular on BC. So that is to say this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle equals 90 degrees according to our construction. And we define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC as point F. So in this right triangle, triangle DEF, this angle equals to theta. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles to 180 degrees. Then we proved that those two right green triangles can go to each other. Why right? those two right triangles can go to each other? Those two angles are both equal to theta. AD equals to DE equals to X. And uh, here, those two angles they are equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees from theta, so those two triangles can go to each other according to angle side angle rule, and from the fact that those two triangles can go to each other, we conclude that AB equals to DF according to the rule that corresponding sides and can go to triangles and go to each other. Those two triangles can go to each other, therefore the corresponding sides AB and DF must be equal to, to each other. So here, AB equals to DF, but we know that AB equals to 6, it is given as the equation. So from this equation, 6 equals to AB equals to DF, we will derive that DF is also equals to 6. So if DF equals to 6, then what is the value of FC? FC equals to DC minus DF. DC is 10, DF is 6, 10 minus 6 is 4. So we found out that FC equals to 4. Likewise, uh, because of the fact that those two right triangles can go to each other, BD must be equal to EF, and only to the rule that the corresponding sides of the right triangles are equal to each other. And if BD equals to Y, then from this equation Y equals to BD equals to EF, we, we derive that EF is also equals to Y. E, EF equals to Y, then We proved that the right triangle ABC is similar to the right triangle EFC according to angle 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 similar to all. Why those two right triangles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees. We have uh, a common angle that belongs to both triangles. And those two angles are equal to each other according to third angle theorem. What is third angle theorem? If two angles in one triangle can go to two angles in another triangle, then the third pair of angles must also can go We have those two angles in the right triangle ABC that can go to those two angles in triangle EFC. Therefore, the third pair of angles must also can go because they are complementary to 180 degrees. Okay, therefore, triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC according to angle 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that the two triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over BC equals to EF over FC. Okay, AB over BC equals to EF over FC. AB equals to 6, BC equals to Y plus 10, EF equals to Y, and FC equals to 4. So we got the equation number 1, 
six over y plus ten equals to y over four because we want to plan the equation number one and we got that six times four is twenty four and it is equal to y times y plus ten. We open the brackets in this side of equation number one and, and we got that twenty four equals to y plus y times y is y squared plus ten y. We subtracted twenty four from this equation and we found out that according to equation number one, y squared plus ten y minus twenty four equals to zero. Okay, so we have here a quadratic equation, and the general formula for quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. a, b, and c are the coefficients of a quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for. And we find out the value of x according to the, the special formula that x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus four times a c over two a. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to 1, the coefficient b equals to 10, and the coefficient c equals to minus 24. And the variable that we are looking for is y, so x equals to y. So we put the data inside the formula for x and we found out the value of the values of x. So x that is equals to y is equals to minus b, b is 10, so minus b is minus 10, plus minus square root of b squared. b is 10, so b squared is 10 squared, that is 100. Minus 4 times a is 1, and times c, that is minus 24, over 2a. a is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that y equals to minus 10, plus minus, minus 4 times minus 24 is plus 26, plus 20, 20 uh, minus 4 times minus 24 is 90, plus 96, 96 plus 100 is 196. And the square root of 196 is 14, so in conclusion, we found out that y equals to minus 10 plus minus 14 over 2. The first solution is y1 equals to minus 10 minus 14 over 2, that is minus 24 over 2, that is minus 12. Uh, minus 12 is the correct solution because of the fact that y is a length. y is a length, therefore y must be a positive number, it cannot be equal to a negative number, so we cancel this solution and we found out we left only with the, with the positive solution that y equals to 2. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right uh, triangle, triangle ABD. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say AD squared equals to AB squared plus BD squared. AD equals to X, so AD squared is X squared plus AB squared, AB is 6, so AB squared is 6 squared, that is 36, plus BD squared, BD is 2, so BD squared is 2 squared, that is 4, so in conclusion we found out that X squared equals to 36 plus 4, 36 plus 4 is 40, so in conclusion we found out that X squared equals to 40, then we took a root out of this equation and we found out that, that X equals to the square root of 40, that is, that is actually equals to either 2 times square root of 10 units, so in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. We finish with the uh, second method, then I present it to you how to find out the value of line segment x according to the third method. In the first method, we defined angle BAD as theta and side BD as y. In the right triangle, triangle ABD, we know that triangle theta equals to BD over AB. BD equals to Y, AB equals to 6, so in conclusion we found out that in, uh, that in the right triangle ABD tangent theta equals to Y over 6. Then we focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. In this right triangle we know that tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to BC over AB. BC equals to Y plus 10, AB equals to 6. So in conclusion we found out that in the right triangle, triangle ABC tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to y plus 10 over 6. Then, this is equation number 1. Then we have a trigonometric identity plus, for tangent theta plus 45 degrees. Tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to 1 plus tangent theta over, ma, well, over 1 minus tangent theta. So we can substitute tangent theta plus 45 degrees in equation number 1 by this expression. We did it and we got it. 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta equals to y plus 10 over 6. We have already found out that tangent theta equals to y over 6, so we substitute tangent theta in this equation, equation number 1, by y over 6. We did it and we got that 1 plus y over 6 over 1 minus y over 6 equals to y plus 10 over 6. 
Here we multiplied 1 by 6 and then we divide it by 6 in order to overcome factor over 5 or 6 and with minus 5 or 6 and we got that according to equation number 1 6 over y over 6 over 6 minus 5 over 6 equals to y plus 10 over 6 We have 6 in the numerator, 6 in the denominator so 6 will get cancelled and we left only with 6 plus y over 6 minus y equals to y plus 10 over 6 we course multiply this equation equation number 1 and we got that 6 times 6 uh, plus y equals to 6 minus y times uh, y plus 10. We open the brackets on both sides of equation number 1 and we got that 6 times 6 is 36 and 6 times y is 6y. And it is equal to 6y plus 6 times 10 that is 60 minus y squared minus 10y. Then we have 6y on both sides of the equation, so 6y will get cancelled. And we left only with 36, that is equal to 60 minus y squared minus 10y. Here we added y squared and 10y to this equation, equation number 1, and we got that y squared plus 10y plus 36 equals to 60. We, we subtracted 60 from this equation, equation number 1, and we got that according to equation number 1, y, y, uh, y squared plus 10y minus 36 minus 60 is minus 24, that is equal to 0. This quadratic equation, we solved it in the second method, and we found out that two solutions for y, the first solution is y1 equals to minus 12, and the second solution is y2 equals to 2. But because of the fact that y is a length, it must be a positive number, so y can never be equal to a negative number, Therefore, this solution will get cancelled and we left only with the solution that y equals to 2 units. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle ABD. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the apodos equals to the sum of the square of the perpendiculars, that is to say, AD squared equals to AB squared plus BD squared. AB is 6, so AB squared is 6 squared, that is 36, plus BD squared, BD is 2, so BD squared is 2 squared, that is 4. And it is equal to AD squared. AD is X, so AD squared is X squared. In conclusion, we found out that X squared equals to 36 plus 4. 36 plus 4 is 40, so X squared equals to 40. We took a root out of this equation and we found out that X equals to the square root of 40. And here we have uh, the solution that X equals to either 2 times square root of 2 units or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. Okay, thank you very much.